So, back for another Jethro Tull tutorial. Today we're uh, looking at the song Up the Pool, which was a cut off the Living in the Past LP that came out in 1971. I'm not sure exactly the studio date for when it was recorded. Um, that, that album spanned uh, some cuts from, I think, 1968 or 60, 69 up to 71. Um, so it could have been anywhere in that time period, but I imagine probably it was 71. Um, going up the pool refers to Blackpool, uh, the city on the west coast of uh, England, Great Britain. Uh, that's where uh, Ian moved when he was 12 years old and I think where he kind of had his adolescence and initial forays into art, uh, maybe music. Uh, he was born in Scotland and lived his first uh, years in Edinburgh, um, but did move to Blackpool when he was 12. Uh, so that's what going up the pool refers to. In the lyrics it mentions the, the Iron Tower smiles down on the Silver Sea. And the Iron Tower is the uh, tower of, literally the Iron Tower of Blackpool, which was opened in 1894. It was uh, sort of inspired by the Eiffel Tower it stands roughly 512 feet, I think, something like that. So it is a, a large structure. Um, so when he refers to yeah the Iron Tower, that's what that's in reference to. There's always also a reference to a person named Edward. Uh, it sounds like Edward Beer when he sings it, uh, which is probably he's actually saying Edward Bear, which was... Um, uh, I forget his last name right offhand, but he was the uh, English Prime Minister from 1970 to 74, I think. So when he's talking about the politicians, and uh, he mentions uh, they'll blame it on Edward Beer, I think he was referencing er Edward Bear, and that was probably a reference to the Prime Minister. So just some tidbits from the lyrics. Um, I played the opening there, and I'm going to show you that. Uh, hopefully the camera angle is a little better this time for this. And I've also moved into my hallway right outside my studio to get less of a uh, boomy echo. I think my other <clears throat> videos suffer from that a bit because it is a pretty live room in my uh, main studio. Alright, so I am tuned to the record, so or at least on the YouTube video. So... I'm not sure if I'm in concert pitch. It's probably pretty close, I would imagine, but uh, I am tuned to the record. So I'm capoed on the 7th fret, and I'm going to let you tune to my guitar real quick. All right, we're operating once again out of this D-shaped chord, which, you know, in, in honesty, it's an A chord. If you uh, don't have it capoed, uh, that's actually an A. This is an A triad. But I'm going to call all the chords uh, C, D, G. We'll call them that, even though they're not that really sonically, but tonally. So the opening starts, if we just take the D-shaped chord and we move it up three frets, we get to the twelfth fret here. And what we're playing is actually a D minor seventh chord when we do that. That would be a D minor triad. So this is a D minor seven, but it's just the D-shaped chord slid, uh, slide it up three frets. And you get that. Alright, so the trick of this song, there's some tricky rhythmic parts again, just because he just throws crazy stuff in there. And uh, this song does, it's one of the early songs that features that slurred upstroke sound. Like that. So that, uh, that strumming pattern, once again, is something you need to get uh, familiar with if you're going to play Ian's songs uh, faithfully to the records. Kind of rake that upstroke. <clears throat> All 
All right, so the opening. So he hits those two notes at the start. And then strums it. And this is something that Ian does all the time. He will pick the first two notes of chords all the time and then strum the rest. So it goes kind of rake that up stroke and then strum that and then we're going to rake up and just hit the D string and then strum like that missed it there, sorry <laughs> So what we're doing there we're strumming kind of an upstroke with all the strings open and that gives us time to transition to the D chord. And then we're doing that uh, thing that once again that he does all the time, hammering on and off this D chord leaving the um, the B string fretted. And then we're playing that C triad with the D in the bass again, like so many of his songs once again. So that's the intro. So that takes us to the vocal start. that same hammer on thing. Going up the pool. And then we're coming down here to the A string, hitting it open, and then hitting it on the second fret. Going up the pool. Down the smoke below. And then we're just taking an A chord. Taking an A chord, suspending it, like that. In the pool, from down the smoke below. See that? coming down to the E string, hitting it open, and then we're hitting it on the third fret. The way I would recommend you reach these is, sorry, let me get in tune, is to play it and hit that with your index finger, play that with your index finger. recommend reaching down and playing it with your third finger because that'll allow you to switch the chords the best Up the pool, from down the smoke below taste 
me mom's jam sonnies and see how anti flow. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna uh, play the A chord and then we're gonna hit the strings open. Going up the pool from down the smoke below. Taste me mom's jam sunnies and see our auntie flow. The candy floss salesman watches ladies in the sand. So we're going to a B minor. And then we're doing the A suspended thing again. Floss salesman. Watches ladies in the sand. <clears throat> now on the record, he actually does something a little different there, which is uh, he doesn't do when he plays it live, and I can see why it's a little hard to sing over. The, with the B minor, he actually goes and hammers on, lifts that on the B string. It goes like. So that's actually a little hard to play and sing. The floss salesman watches ladies in the sand down for. So when I saw a, a clip of him playing it live, he he wasn't doing that little thing. He was just playing the B minor chord. The floss salesman watches ladies in the sand. So you, in between the transitions of these chords, you can kind of hit the strings open. Boss salesman watches the ladies. So you kind of have to let just play the strong uh, strings open when you transition back to the chords. The boss salesman watches ladies in the sand down forth. And so we're to a C shape chord now. Four Freaky Weekend. And then we're actually going to pick the A string of the G chord. Freaky Weekend. In the hope. And then we're switching to this B flat shape. Hope that they'll be meeting Misty Universe. Oops. Now here's a little tricky thing that I, I it took me a while to get was actually he doesn't go back to that opening sort of thing. He goes for the freaky weekend in the hope that they'll be meeting Mr. Universe. Now let's look at that again, because it's it's not like the others and it, it's easy to throw you off. The tail be meeting Mr. Universe. Once again the rhythm of that is When you go back to this chord, when you slide the D chord up again, the three frets, frets to the twelfth fret, don't worry about picking those strings individually anymore. Just strum it and rake back and do the slurred upstroke. The hope that they'll be meeting Misty Universe. So just do that. And don't worry about picking those strings individually because I, I don't think he does it on the record. <clears throat> so that brings us to the second verse. The iron tower smiles, the, hmm, tongue twisted. The iron tower smiles down upon the silver sea. Along the golden mile, there'll be swigging mugs of tea. 
Christians there Who've come to take the air While posing for the daily press We'll look around and blame the mess On Edward Beer So, yeah, the second verse is just like the first. And then that brings us up to the chorus. There'll be buckets, spades, and bingo. C with the D in the bass. Although I thought it sounded cool when I added a lower uh, octave to this note. Not quite in tune. Anyway, instead of just hitting that, playing that, I found it. There'll be buckets, spades, and bingo. So I just thought it sounded cool. But you can just play it like that. Be buckets, spades, and bingo, cockles, muscles. And then when you play this G chord, uh, play it with these two strings fretted here. That kind of takes the third out. That's the third. And we're not going to play that. Bucket spades and bingo cockles, muscles, rainy days. Seaweed and sand castles, icy waves. So let's get the rhythm of that. That's how the rhythm is. Okay. It'll be buckets, spades, and bingo, cockles, muscles, rainy days. A seaweed and sand castles, icy ways. Deck chairs, rubber dinghies, old bed, old vest, braces dangling down. A sun tan stranded starfish in a day. Brings us to the last verse. We're going up the pool and down the smoke below to taste me mom's jam sunnies and see our antique flow. The candy floss salesman watches ladies in the sand down for a freaky weekend. In the hope that they'll be meeting Mr. Universe and That brings us to the second chorus There'll be buckets, spades, and bingo Cockles, muscles, rainy days The seaweed and sand castles, icy waves Deck chairs, rubber dinghies, old vest braces dangling down. The sun tan stranded starfish in a daze. And then that brings us to the end. Oh, black pool. That's hard to. I have trouble with the timing with this one because this is. Uh, It's that rhythm again. Black pool, oh black pool. See that? It's that rhythm again. Black pool, God, I have trouble with that. Black pool, oh black.
I hope you can sing that and play it better than I can, because I just, I don't know why I have trouble with that. Blackpool, Blackpool, oh Blackpool. <laughs> that time I got it. All right, so that brings us to the ending lick. So that goes like this. I would just play it with my middle, f let's see, yeah. I take it back. I think it, well, you can finger it whichever way it feels comfortable to you, but I think I'm going to finger it with the index first on the A string on the second fret. And we're going to be picking these to the A string, D string, and G string. Look at that slower. So, finger on the A string. Go up one fret, come back down. And then on the G string do that. go back down the strings that's how we finish it so you have to alternate pick this because it's pretty fast He ends it on an A minor chord, which is strange. So come back to the bridge here and just rake it. And end the song like that. So let's go over the ending here. Oh. got the little those notes so that's on the G string hammer it on and then play that on the D string forgot about that little thing and then rake the A minor to finish Folks, that brings us to the end of another tutorial. Uh, stay tuned for more. I'm trying to teach all the ones that I already know, and then uh, once I do that, I'll start tackling some of the ones that I don't know as well. So have a great Sunday. See you next time.